For this crochet project, you're going to need your three and a half millimeter crochet hook, as well as a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle or darning needle. Now there's a separate video tutorial for my crochet panda and I used this sparkle yarn for the panda's nose and for the, the paw prints. So you have a lot of yarn left over and I'm going to use this same sparkle yarn and this is Red Heart metallic black colored yarn and I'm going to, you only need one skein for the graduation cap and you only need one, this is the leftover yarn that I used for my panda for the nose and the paw prints so you'll have plenty left over for the cap. And also for the gold tassel I used Yarn Bee Soft Secret Honey Colored Yarn and this is just some of my leftover gold yarn that I had in my yarn stash and it's a honey color. Here's some information about this yarn. I have a free printable diploma that you can find on my blog www.helenmaycrochet.com and you can even the on the free printable diploma you can actually type in the name and all that information before you print it out and I'm using my handy dandy clover tassel maker and if you're using your tassel maker you're going to need your embroidery scissors the yarn that I chose for my gown is by Yarn Bee Soft Secret. The color is black and it comes in um, one skein is six ounces or 300 yards. And I, the reason why I chose this black is because it has a nice sheen to it and it's a sturdy yarn. 100% acrylic. Medium four yarn. Now to make the cap, you're going to start with your black colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around the crochet hook. Now you're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four on video tutorials. You just yarn over. Turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. Go ahead and make a chain of 32 and mine measures approximately seven inches across. After you make your chain of 32, you're going to make one half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So you just yarn over, go into the third chain from the hook, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. And so that counts as your second stitch. Those skip stitches will count as your first stitch. This is your second half double crochet stitch. And you're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch back across. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make your half double crochet, and you're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch back across. So I'm just going to show you a few more. So go ahead, finish making one half double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So now you should have a total of 31 stitches and this is what my, my work looks like. Then we're going to move up to the second row. So for the second row you're going to chain two, one, two, and then turn your work. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, and then make one half double crochet into every stitch back across. And when you reach the end, you should still have a total of 31 stitches. So make sure you keep track of your stitch count because you want it to be have a straight edge on both sides. So the stitch count is going to be very important. 
So remember, whatever you start with, with your, your um, first row, you should maintain that stitch count for every row. And also remember that your first chain two counts as a stitch. So now I finished the second row and I still have 31 stitches. Now with half double crochet, sometimes it's hard to see that last stitch. So that's why counting your stitches is very important to maintain your stitch count so that you'll always have a straight edge on both sides. So now you're just going to keep repeating that where you chain two, turn your work, and then make one half double crochet into the next stitch and one half double crochet in every stitch back across and you're just going to keep repeating this where you chain two and make one half double crochet in every stitch across maintaining your stitch count until your total height is seven inches so we want this to be a square, 7 inches by 7 inches. For mine, I finished 20 rows, and you can see how both sides are straight, and it measures 7 inches by 7 inches. When you're finished, you can go ahead and just finish off, just yarn over, and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So on mine, you can tell that the sparkly side, the more sparkly side, of course, is the right side, and then the less sparkly side would be the wrong side. So once you find the wrong side, go ahead and make it, face it up, the wrong side. Take your tapestry needle, put it onto any loose yarn ends, and then you're just going to weave the loose yarn end through your work on the wrong side. And you can go through two different directions if you want to. And then just trim it. Go ahead and bury any loose yarn ends. Now you can set this portion aside while we make the under portion of the cap. So now just take your black colored yarn and we're going to start with the magic circles. So just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook, go under those two loops, bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So you just go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet. So there's my second third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then just take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. And then take the loose yarn in and pull on that. Then you're going to turn your work so that you're working in rounds. So now you're going to make two single crochet into the first stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches in the round. Now if you need to, you can turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end to close the center of the magic circle. And then just take a loose yarn end, place it right where you left off as a yarn marker to keep track of your increase rounds. We're going to be increasing the number of stitches in the round. So for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into one stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. 
So now you should have 18 total stitches in the round and I'm not going to give you the increase uh, stitch count for each round because all you have to do is add 6 to the previous stitch count. So our previous round was 12 stitches, you add 6 to that, you have 18 total stitches in the round. And after we finish the next round, you should have add 6 to 18 and you should have 24 stitches in the round. So go ahead, move the yarn marker up to where you left off and for this increase round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into two stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around. Then move your yarn marker up and then for the next round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Then for the next round you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Then for the next round you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. So now you should have 42 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then after you finish three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, now we're going to make one increase round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches and then make two single crochet into the next stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 48 stitches in the round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So two rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. Then go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. And then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Now you want to take your tapestry needle and place it onto any loose yarn ends. And then you want to weave the loose yarn end through the wrong side of your work. And then just trim it. So go ahead and bury any loose yarn ends. After you bury your loose yarn ends, go ahead and turn your work so you have the right side facing you. And then just set this aside with the cap top. We're going to make the tassel now. So for my tassel, I have my clover tassel maker and this tassel maker usually starts out like this and then you just kind of stretch it. I want to stretch it to the full size for the tassel that I'm making and then you just screw the I just unscrewed it so I'm going to screw this back in to tighten it so now I have it at the full length that I want for the tassel. Then I take my gold colored yarn and I'm starting the end of the tassel here at the bottom in the middle and then you just take and wrap the yarn around the center of the tassel maker. Wrap it around several times. So I wrapped it several times around the center and then I'm cutting it at the bottom Now before I cut the ends, I'm going to take and cut a little bit of the yarn for the center 
and it's going to be a little bit of, of a length because I want it to also extend from the center of the cap towards the end. So I'm going to go ahead and try to see about what length would be for the center to the end. And then I'll need some to wrap around the center of the tassel. So I'm just going to cut a little extra. That way I know I have enough. And then I'm going to take and hold the center of the tassels. And if you're using your tassel maker, you're going to need your embroidery scissors. So now you take your embroidery scissors and you just cut the top portion and then you cut the bottom portion of the tassel. Then you just take and tie the yarn around the center. So you can set it down. And then you just kind of fold the excess yarn strand will just blend in with the tassel. And then I'm going to take smooth out the upper portion of the tassel and then you want to wrap the yarn around this upper portion and then I'm going to use my tapestry needle to help tie a knot so again you want to pull it tight and then just go through with your tapestry needle. Make sure you don't go all the way because you want to tie a knot. And I'm going to go through twice. curling on me. And then you have your tassel. Now I'm going to sew the tassel to the hat. So make sure you have the tassel so that it hangs over the edge so that you have the length that you need. And then you're going to go and take, go into the center of the hat with your tapestry needle. Then make sure that you hold it because you want your, ta your tassel to hang over the edge. Then you can take and tie a knot or a stitch on the wrong side of the square graduation cap. And then you can just trim a little loose yarn end. Now you're going to set this aside while you make the cap that goes on top. So you're going to start with the magic circle again with the black colored yarn. And then you're going to make your slip knot first. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. And 
and then you're going to close the magic circle just like we did before then you're going to take turn your work and then make two single crochet into every stitch around just like you did before until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over then you can finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the cap the little cap in place and as well as sewing the dome portion of the cap underneath in place and then you can pull on that center loose yarn end on the magic circle to make sure that the opening there's no opening in the center so now we're ready to sew all of the pieces together so the first thing you're going to do is take the small little cap that we just made and you want to take the smaller loose yarn end and bring it directly over the gold portion make sure that you have it centered and then bring that in towards the wrong side then you're going to place your cap directly underneath you want to make sure that it's centered and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and the long end that you left for sewing make sure you have everything centered before you sew it in place and then you're just going to take and sew all around the edge go into the cap on the inside make sure that the right side is showing so you have the right side against the wrong side of the cap and here's the right side of the cap and then you have your little tiny cap piece that you're going to sew the inner cap, the larger cap, in place. So you're just going to sew all around and make sure that you don't sew your, poke yourself but also that you're sewing this cap on this side and sewing the larger cap on the bottom. And then you sew it in place. Also, make sure that you have your tassel hanging on the corner that you want it to hang on to. And when you're finished, you just tie a knot on the wrong side. And then you bury your loose yarn end on the wrong side. And then you have the one loose yarn end that you brought from the right side the, from the magic circle. Just make sure you bury that loose yarn end as well. And I'm going to bring that in towards the center. And then just bury that loose yarn end too. This is what the panda looks like with the graduation cap in place. Since I want my hat to be removable, I placed a pin on the under side of the hat. And remember, since this is an older child, it's okay to have the safety pin, but if you have a younger child, you want to be careful with that so you may not want to use a safety pin and if you don't care about having the hat be removable you can always sew the hat in place too so you're going to take your yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop take your crochet hook go right through the loop hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb then you're just going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot 
Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then we're going to make a chain. So we're going to make a chain of 67, but I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 67, and then come back. So now you should have your chain of 67, and you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you just count back, one, two, and then take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and then make your single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. So one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a total of 66 stitches in the row. So now this is what your work should look like. And we're going to move up to the next row. So for the next row, you're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then just turn your work. And then you're going to make one double crochet into the next stitch. So you just yarn over, go right into the next stitch, and bring up a loop. Then you have three loops on your hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. Two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make one double crochet into the next eight stitches and then come back. So one double crochet into a total of ten. So you're going to make eight more because the first chain three counts as a stitch. So go ahead and make one double crochet into every stitch until you have a total of ten double crochet stitches and then come back. So now this is how your work should look and we're going to make our first corner because we're making the neck portion of the gown at this time. So we're going to make our first corner. So the first corner you're going to make five double crochet into the same stitch. So make five double crochet into the same stitch and then come back. So now after you finish the five double crochet in one stitch, you're going to make one double crochet into the next 12 stitches. So one double crochet in each of the next 12 stitches and then come back. So this is how my work looks so far. So we made our corner. So this is the back panel. This shorter portion here is one of the sides of the back panel. Here is your first corner, and then this goes over the arm. And now we're making our second corner. So in the second corner, you're going to make five double crochet into the same stitch. So five double crochet into the same stitch for our second corner. Now, after you made your second corner, you're going to make one double crochet into the next stitch, and you're going to make one double crochet into the every stitch until you have a total of 18 double crochet across the front. So this will be across the front of the neck portion. So one double crochet into a total of 18 across the front and that will bring us to our third corner. So now this is how my work looks. Just show you a close-up. So here you can see how it's forming the neck. So here's the back, one of the back sides. Here's one of the sides for the arm. And then we just made the front. Now we're going to be making our next corner. So the next corner you're going to make one double crochet, five double crochet into the next stitch. So five double crochet into the same stitch for our third corner. 
So after you make the five double crochet into the same stitch, you're going to make one double crochet into the next 12 stitches. So one double crochet into each of the next 12 stitches and then that will bring us to our next corner. So now after you finish the one double crochet into 12 stitches, you're going to make one five, I'm sorry, <laughs> make five double crochet into the next stitch and that will be our last corner. So five double crochet into the next stitch for our last corner. Then just make one double crochet into each of the remaining ten stitches. So one double crochet into each of the ten remaining stitches and then come back. So now you can see the neck opening. So here are the two back panels and we're going to be placing buttons here and a buttonhole and then here are for the arms and then this is for the front. So now we're going to move up to the next row so to move up to the next row, you're just going to chain three, one, two, three, and then turn your work. And then that first chain three counts as your first double crochet for this next row. And you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch until you get to the third stitch of the five double crochet in your first corner. So take your crochet hook make a double crochet into the next stitch. So here, under your chain three, you can see there's a slight upslope right here. That's your first stitch directly under the chain three. So your next stitch is where you're going to place your double crochet. Because your chain three counts as your first stitch for this row. Another way you can tell is your chain three is directly over the double crochet from the previous row. So they're directly over each other. So now just make one double crochet into the next stitch and then one double crochet in every stitch until you get to the third stitch of the first corner. and then come back. So this is how my work looks so far and I've reached the first corner so there are my five stitches in my first corner and this is my third stitch or third double crochet from the previous round. So I'm going to make five double crochet into that stitch and you're going to repeat that for every corner so every corner stitch, which is the third double crochet out of the five double crochet stitches that were in the same stitch on the previous round, you're going to place five double crochet into each of those corners. And then every other stitch is going to have only one double crochet in it. So each corner, the third double crochet in the five double crochet will have five double crochet in it. And remember we have four corners. And then every other stitch is just one double crochet. So go ahead, finish this row. One double crochet in every stitch except for the corners. In the corner stitch you're going to make five double crochet into the same stitch. So now this is how your work should look and now what we're going to do is we're going to make the back panel on this side and then the back panel on this side and then we're going to make the front panel. So to start we're going to start where we left off for this back panel. So you're going to chain three.
turn your work and then that chain three counts as your first double crochet for this row and we're going to be stopping at the third double crochet in this first corner so you're going to make one double crochet into the next stitch and then one double crochet in each of the stitches until you reach the third double crochet in the first corner. So now I have 15 total stitches for that first row of the back panel. We're going to move up to the next row of the back panel. So you're going to chain three and then turn your work. And that's how you're going to make each of the rows for the back panel and you're going to make a total of four including that first row that we made. So this is the second row of the back panel and we want a total of four. And you're just going to make one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across for your second row of the back panel on the one side because remember we have two back panels we're working on the first one right now So you chain three to move up to the next row and then one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across. This is our second row and we want a total of four for this side's back panel. So now after you finish your four rows for this side's back panel, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you can see how we finished one back panel and now we're going to finish the other back panel. So you just turn your work so that the back panels are facing away from you. And also make sure that you know where your right side is. So this is the right side of my work. So have the right side facing up and then the back panels are away from you. So here you can see how I have my work. This is the front and this is the right side facing up. And then we're going to work on the other back panel. So you take your back panel and you're going to join in the corner. So you have five stitches in the corner so you have to find your middle stitch the third stitch and you're going to join your yarn in that stitch. So this is the third double crochet in the corner on the back panel, the other side of the back panel. So you just bring up a loop, go ahead and chain one, and then tie a knot. And we're going to bury our loose yarn end as we crochet. So go ahead and lay the, the loose yarn end across the top of the back panel on this side. And then you're going to chain three. And then make one double crochet into the next stitch and you're going to go around your loose yarn end or behind it and bring up a loop and then complete your double crochet. And you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch and then you're going to chain three to move up to the next row and you should have 15 total stitches for each row on this side as well. The same as the opposite side back panel. And you're also going to have four rows just like on the other side. So go ahead finish this side's back panel too. Remember you're going to have four rows and you know how to move up to the next row, you just chain three and then make one double crochet in every stitch across until you have a total of four rows of one double crochet in every stitch on this side of the back panel as well. So now after you finish the four rows of one double crochet in every stitch, looks like there's a flaw on one of these. Oh that's my loose yarn end, so I'm going to trim my loose yarn end. 
Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you've finished both back panels. So this is where our buttons are going to go and our buttonholes back there. And you want to find your right side again. Let me see which side I want for my right side. So one side tends to be a little bit shinier. That's your right side. So I have both of the back panels. Go ahead and move those towards the back. I have the right side facing up. And actually you can, now you're going to have the front facing away. So the right side is facing up and I have the front panel over here. You're going to take the corner in the top right corner and you want to go into the third double crochet of the five in the corner. So here's the corner, the third double crochet. And you're going to join your yarn again in that corner. So you want to chain one and then tie your knot. And we're going to be burying our loose yarn end again as we crochet. So you're going to chain three. And then you're going to make one double crochet into the next stitch. And one double crochet into every stitch across the front panel only. So only across the front panel to the next corner the third double crochet in the next corner. And we want four rows for the front panel as well. So I finished my first row across the front and I have 28 total stitches for that first row and then I'm going to move up to the next row by chaining three and then making one double crochet in every stitch back across. And again, we want four rows total for the front panel. So now I finished four rows for the front panel. And then you have the back panels. And then I'm just going to show you, I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop here because we're going to finish, we're going to start crocheting from this corner. But I'm going to fold it over on itself. So now you can see the neck opening. This will be the back for the buttons and the buttonholes. And then this is the size of the armhole. So the size of the armhole is about, I'll give you a measurement here, it's about 10 centimeters. So about 10 centimeter opening here. So if you wanted a larger opening, for the or a smaller opening for the arm you would adjust the size sizes so if you want a smaller opening you would make less than four rows of double crochet and if you want a larger opening then you would make an additional row of double crochet until you get the size that you want I figured that this was a pretty good size for my panda so that's the size that I made. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because this would fit a little baby. So if you wanted to make baby clothes out of this with a different color, then you could. So that's just to show you if you needed a larger opening for the armhole. So now we're ready to make the bottom portion of the dress. So you're going to go to where you left off and we're also going to be joining Two. So we're going to be slip stitching and joining the front panel to the back panel and then we're going to be working in rounds. So for the first round you're going to take and chain one where you left off, chain one, and then you're going to make a slip stitch. So you're going to form a U with the front panel and the back panel and then you're going to slip stitch into the top stitch of the double crochet on the opposite side. So just go right into that top stitch. 
try to find that top stitch there. Then you're going to make a slip stitch. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then that forms your first armhole, and you joined the front panel to the back panel. Then you can chain one, and then you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across this back panel on the one side. So now you want to make sure that your work is not twisted. You finished the one back panel. Now you're going to bring up the other back panel and you're going to slip stitch the two panels together. So go into that top stitch again on the opposite back panel. And then make your slip stitch to join the two back panels. Then you can go ahead and chain one. And then I'm going to go around my loose yarn end. So I have a loose yarn end there. I'm going to crochet around it. I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch going around my or behind my loose yarn end and making a single crochet. And I'm going to make one single crochet in every stitch across this opposite side back panel. So now that brings me to my next armhole. I have my loose yarn end there. I'm going to bury it too. So now I'm going to join. I'm making a U again. Here's the back panel where I have my crochet hook and here's the front panel on the opposite side of the armhole and then I'm going to go into the top stitch of that double crochet on the front panel. And get in there. And then I'm going to make a slip stitch to join the back panel to the front panel and I formed my second armhole. So now we are officially working in rounds. So now I'm going to bury this loose yarn end. Any loose yarn ends that you have that you come across you can bury them. So then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet in every stitch across the front panel. Now we've finished our first joining round. So now we'll be working in rounds for the bottom of the dress. And I have one stitch left before the next armhole. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into that last stitch. Then I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. And now I'm going to make an increase round. So this first chain three counts as the first double crochet for our increase round, which means we're going to be increasing the number of stitches in this round. So this is our first stitch. We're going to make one double crochet into the armhole space. So you just yarn over, go right into the armhole space, bring up a loop, make a double crochet. So that counts as our second stitch and then we're going to make another double crochet into the next stitch. So 
So that's my third double crochet. And then I want to make two double crochet into the next stitch. And that's going to be our increase pattern. So you're going to be making one double crochet into three stitches and then two double crochet into the next stitch. So now I want to make a double crochet into the next three stitches. And then two double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to keep repeating that pattern all the way around back to where you started. One double crochet into three stitches and then two double crochet into the next stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to where you started. And when you reach the other armhole, just make one double crochet into the armhole space just like you did for this first armhole. So now you should be back to where you started and I have about 75 stitches in my round. Now if you're off by one or two that's fine. You can always make up for it during this next increase round if you want to be, get to a stitch count closer to what I am. So now you can make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made in the round. Go ahead and yarn over Turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And then you're going to chain three to move up to the next round. So now for this next increase round, depending on if you're making this for your panda, so our panda is kind of chubby, so he's going to need a little bit more flare on the dress. So if you're happy with this flare, then you would just maintain this you would not increase the stitch count from here. But since I need a little bit more flare to make up for the belly of the panda, I'm going to go ahead and increase again. So for this increase round, I'm going to be making one stitch in two and then two double crochet into the next one. So this first chain three counts as my first stitch. I'm going to make one double crochet into the next stitch. and then two double crochet into the next stitch. So when you make your two double crochet into the same stitch, you're increasing the round by one stitch. So anytime you make two double crochet into any of the stitches in the round, that's where you know you're adding a stitch so you can determine how many stitches you need for this round. And the reason why I do it this way is that it keeps it staggered around evenly in the round. So now, you just for this round, you just make one double crochet into two stitches, and then two double crochet into the next stitch. And then you repeat that pattern all the way around back to where you started. So now I have a hundred stitches in the round. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made. Then I'm going to chain three. And then for this last increase round, you're going to make one double crochet in one stitch and then two double crochet into the next stitch. So this first chain three counts as my first stitch. I'm going to make two double crochet into the next stitch. So now I'm going to make one double crochet into the next stitch. and then two double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to keep repeating that pattern all the way around back to where you started. So now I have a total of 150 total stitches in the round. 
you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made and then you're going to chain four one two three four and then that's going to count as your first treble crochet for this round and you're going to make one treble crochet you yarn over twice go into the next stitch bring up a loop four loops on the hook yarn over and go through two yarn over and go through two and then yarn over and go through two to complete a treble crochet and you're going to make one treble crochet in every stitch around so you yarn over twice go into the next stitch bring up a loop yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through two loops yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through two loops yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through two loops to complete a treble crochet and you're going to make one treble crochet in every stitch around make one more with you So now just make a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first chain four that you made and you're going to keep repeating this pattern chain four and then one treble crochet into every stitch around for most of the length of the bottom portion of the dress and then the last two rounds I'm going to show you a fun design that will look kind of like a diamond shape. So for most of the length of this bottom portion of the dress, I made it easy on you by making them treble crochets. It kind of helps lengthen the stitch. So when you come back, I'll show you how many rounds I made with the treble crochet and then I'll show you the fun design stitch for the last two rounds. You're going to need two buttons. I chose these anchor buttons. They're a dark color. And you're also going to need a sewing needle and thread. So for mine, I made a total of four rounds with the treble crochet. And now I'm going to show you a design. Now if you don't want to make this design and you just want to finish your gown. You can make two more rounds with just the treble crochet, one treble crochet in every stitch. But if you want to add a little something extra, a crochet design onto the bottom of your gown, I'm going to show you a fun stitch. So now I just finished that last round of treble crochets and I'm going to move up to the next round. So I'm going to chain three. One, two, three and that's going to count as your first double crochet for this round so for mine I want to have the design every fourth stitch so in between the design I want three double crochet so this first chain three counts as the first double crochet in this round so I'm going to make one double crochet into the next round and one double crochet into the next stitch. So now we're going to make we're going to make the first design. It's going to be half of the design. We're going to be making diamonds. So around the post of the treble crochet from the previous round and you can see how the posts are all lining up so you know that the next post would be this one and we're going to be making front post stitches so the first front post stitch that we're going to make is a front post treble crochet so you're going to yarn over twice you're going to go around the post so go right in front of the post right to the side of it go behind it and out the opposite side so that the post is sitting in front of your crochet hook and that's how it gets its name front post 
Now we're going to make a treble crochet. So we're making a front post treble crochet. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring up a loop. So now you have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two loops. Now you have three loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. And then you just completed a front post treble crochet. So now you're going to make two front post double crochet stitches around the same post. So you're going to yarn over one time because we're making a double crochet. You're going to go right around the post just like you did for the front post treble except this time we're going to make a double crochet. So you just yarn over and bring up a loop. Now you have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops to complete a double crochet. Now we're going to make one more front post double crochet around the same stitch. So you yarn over, go around the same post, bring up a loop and make your front post double crochet. So now you see that you have all three around the same post. Then you're not going to skip any stitches and you're going to make one double crochet into the next three stitches. And what's nice is the post will line up with the previous round. So you know you're working your stitches correctly. And mine has 150 stitches in the round. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a front post treble crochet around the next post from the previous round. So you yarn over twice and then you go around the post that you're working around from the previous round, which is the next stitch. Bring up a loop and then make your treble crochet stitch. And then you want two front post double crochet stitches around the same post. And then you'll see your treble, front post treble crochet stitch, your front post double, and your front post double. So you have three posts around the one post from the previous round. Then you're just going to make one double crochet into the next three stitches so you don't skip stitches. Go into the next stitch. So I mean you could do so much with this fun design. Again, this is only half of the design. I'm going to be showing you the other half that will complete the top part of the diamond. So, you, I mean, you can make washcloths, you can make baby blankets, you can have all kinds of fun with this stitch. So now, you're going to make your front post treble crochet and two double front post double crochets around the next post. This will be the last one that I show you and then I'll let you work this, repeat this pattern all the way around back to where you started. There's my front post treble. front post double crochet front post double crochet so now I'm back to where I started and I have two stitches remaining so I'm going to show you how I worked these last two stitches 
so that the design will be even, meaning that I'll still have three double crochet between the design. So what I do is I make one double crochet into the next stitch, and then two double crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to make my design around the post that has the chain three. So I have my chain three right here, and then I'm going to use the chain three post from the previous round to make my design. Then, after you finish the design, you can make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made. And then that will complete the design so that it's even all the way around. So now I'm going to show you the top portion of the design. So you just chain three. And again, that will count as your first double crochet for this round. And then you're going to make one double crochet into the next two stitches, and then that will bring you to the design. So you're still maintaining the three double crochet stitches between the design. And like I said, it's going to be a diamond design. So this is the bottom portion of the diamond, and now we're going to make the top portion of the diamond. So now, to make the top portion of the diamond, we're going, I'm going to show you how to make a front post treble crochet three together. Now that is a mouthful. I'll say it one more time. I'm going to show you how to make a front post treble crochet three together. And these are the three stitches that we're going to be crocheting together, or the three posts. So we're going to be working around those three posts from the previous round. So all of these stitches, when we crochet together, are going to be treble stitches. So the first thing that you're going to do is yarn over twice. Then you're going to go around the first post from the previous round of the three out of the design. So go around that first post, and as you can see, the post is in front of my crochet hook. And again, that's how it gets its name, front post. So we're going to make a front post treble, but we're going to be crocheting three together, so it's a little bit different. So now you're going to bring up a loop, and you have four loops on your hook. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go only through two loops. Then you have three loops remaining, and we're going to repeat it just one more time. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. Now you have two loops remaining. You're going to leave those two loops on your hook. Now you're going to yarn over twice again. And now you're going to go around the second post from the previous round. So just go around that second post. And again, it's in front of my crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop. Now you have five loops on your hook. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. Now you have four loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. And now you have three loops remaining. You're going to leave those three loops on your hook, and then we're going to make a treble around our last post. So you yarn over twice, and then you're going to go around that third post from the previous round's design, Bring up a loop. Now you have six loops on your hook. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. Now you have five loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. Now you have four loops remaining. Now you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all four. And then you just completed a front post treble crochet three together, a fun new stitch. 
and you can see how it creates a diamond shape, a fun diamond shape. Then you're just going to make one double crochet into the next three stitches. And then that will bring you to your next design. So you're going to make it the same way. So I'm going to make a couple of these with you. And then I just completed my diamond shape. Then I just make one double crochet into the next three stitches. I'll make one more with you and then I'll let you finish all the way around back to where we started. So go ahead, finish repeating this pattern all the way around, back to where we started, and then come back. So now you can see the beautiful design along the bottom of the dress, and I just slip stitched to join the round. Now you can finish off, just yarn over, and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now we're going to be making the arms, the armholes. This is what my dress looks like so far. Actually, it's the gown, the graduation gown. It has a nice flare to fit over your panda belly. With the right side facing you, or the side that you want showing for the dress, you're going to join in the armhole. So here's the top of the armhole and here's the bottom. You're going to join in the bottom armhole. So go ahead and get your yarn and bring up a loop. Then chain one and tie a knot. And we're going to bury the loose yarn end as we crochet. So you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And this is going to be an increase round, meaning we're going to increase the number of stitches in the round. So you're going to make one double crochet into four stitches. Now some parts of the arm you're going to be working along the side of stitches, so you have to evenly space your stitches. So there's my second stitch. Third, fourth, and then I'm going to make two double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to where you started. So one double crochet into four stitches.
So there I had a double crochet stitch on the side so I made two double crochet into that stitch and that was my third. Now I'm going to make my fourth into the next stitch and then two double crochet into the next stitch. And you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to where we started in the round. So for mine, I ended with 47 stitches in the round. Because some of the stitches were evenly spaced, you may be off by one or two stitches from mine. That's okay. The stitch count, as long as you're close to mine, is fine. Then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first chain three that you made. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through, both loops on the hook. Then chain four, one, two, three, four. And this time you're only going to make one treble crochet into every stitch around. So now this stitch count should be the same as your previous round if you did it correctly. So just yarn over twice, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then make your treble, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through the remaining two. And you're going to make one treble crochet in every stitch around. And then come back. So I'll make one more with you. So then when you reach the first chain four that you made, just make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain four. And then for our last round, it's going to be a decrease round, you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and that'll count as your first double crochet for this decrease round. So you're going to make one and four and then decrease. So this first chain three counts as your first double crochet for the round. So you're going to make one double crochet into the next three to start. So then you have one and four, and then you're going to make your single crochet, I mean double crochet, two stitches together. So we're going to make a double crochet, two stitches together. So you yarn over go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two, you have two loops remaining, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two, three loops remaining, yarn over and go through the three remaining loops to complete a double crochet, two stitches together. And we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around, back to where you started. I'm going to make this first set with you, or second set I should say. So one double crochet into four stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and then you're going to double crochet two stitches together. So you yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, then yarn over and go through three to complete a double crochet two stitches together. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So for mine, I had one remaining stitch I'm just going to make one double crochet into the remaining stitch. So I had one double crochet into four and then one remaining stitch. So I just made a double crochet into that remaining stitch and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first chain three that I made. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you need to repeat the same steps that you did for this arm 
for the other arm and then come back. So now you can go ahead and bury any loose yarn ends. You just take and put the loose yarn end onto your tapestry needle and just weave it through the wrong side of your work. So you just go through and just weave it through the wrong side of the work and then you can take and just trim the loose yarn end then just take and sew your buttons in place. I ended up using just a sewing needle and thread and then you can just take through the double crochet stitch on the opposite side you can take and use it as a buttonhole. It works great. So my diameter of my buttons is one and a half centimeters. You want to make sure that you line up your buttonhole from the double crochet with your buttons before you sew them on. So you can see how I sewed mine in place. Right on the edge there. And then you just take the double crochet stitch on the opposite side and it works as a buttonhole. And it works great.